For years, the Spanish league has been dominated by Real, by Barca. And that one season where, you know, Atletico decided to chip in and win it. Well, that is no more because today we begin a new era in Spain as we embark on a new journey with Celta Vigo. With that being said, let's begin our new journey. Let's do this. And that is right, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the first episode of our Celta Vigo career mode. I put out the poll and over 60% of you said you wanted to see the Spanish club be our next career mode on this channel. I'm excited. Hopefully you guys are as well. Let's show you around what I've done, what's coming up, and then we'll talk transfers as well as we embark on a new journey here with a new club. So let's start with the sliders then. Okay, so if you watch my Road to Glory save, you'll know that we have been playing with sliders. We are going to be using the exact same, or pretty much the exact same, that we use in that series on this one. So this is how the sliders will be set up for the CPU. So we touch the shot error down to 30, the pass error down to 20, the shot speed is up at 65, the pass speed at 70, and if we scroll down, goalkeeper ability 70, which I think it might be 75, or I, I can't exactly remember, marking at 75, run frequency 75, and uh, the first touch control error down at 25. For our side of the sliders, everything will remain 50, of course. And in terms of, uh, I'm pretty sure, the there it is. The half length is on four minutes and the difficulty, as always, legendary difficulty. Nothing's going to be changing on that front. So that's how the sliders look. In terms of everything else, though, I haven't really done that much. So I'll take you around. We'll, we'll look at the squad and all that good stuff. And then we'll check out some players. And I'll explain kind of my thought process and overall what I'm looking at doing potentially. There's some massive news maybe coming out of the transfer front. I'll show you that in a moment as well. So let's start with the team. So the actual squad here at Celta Vigo isn't bad. We've got some very good players and some players as well that have a very good potential. Like the likes of Ruben Blanco here. He's probably going to be our starting goalkeeper. If we take a look down at his uh, you know, goalkeeping stats, they're not spectacular right now. He's only 77 rated, but he's only 21 years of age. He has a potential of around about 84 or 85, I think. So he is most likely going to go straight into the side and be our starting goalkeeper over Sergio here. Unfortunately for him, he is 30. He's growing. Uh, no, not as that as much as, as maybe Blanco is going to do. And overall, I don't think he'll be our starting goalkeeper. So my goalkeeper, my number one, is probably going to be Ruben Blanco. Throw him in the training, get him trained up. I don't think we'll need to sign a new goalkeeper. Now at the back four then, this is potentially where we might need a little bit of an upgrade. So at right back, we've got Hugo Malo. Again, solid choice. I think he's probably going to be my starting right back throughout this season. Again, a player with over 83, 84 potential. Starts at an 80 rated. Shouldn't be too long to actually get him there. And thankfully, he's not injury prone, which uh, I really dislike in certain players when you play this. But nevertheless, a solid choice of right back as well. Got a bags of experience. Should be quite good. In terms of the back two, we've got Cabral as a centre back. Again, 31 though, so he is ageing and probably needs replacing. Power header backs into player, not really too bothered about the traits. Alongside him, we've got Gomez, 25, so we don't have to replace him straight away. He's a six foot one, and overall, I don't think he's got a great potential in terms of that one. I bet it's somewhere in the 80s margin. I haven't checked, but that's what I'm going to guess if I had to. Left back, we've got Johnny, again, 23, pretty young, can play left back, right back, should be a good fit for us. I'm going to hope he's got a good potential. I don't 100% know. I kind of don't want to check it either. I want to be this to be a bit harder for me as well. Just kind of guessing the players that I think the potential they have. But in terms of back four, we've got a little bit of depth on the bench. Fontes, um, 27, and Ron Kalia, 30. But again, we're probably going to need to bring in maybe a defender. And that might be high up on our list of things to do. The midfield three, I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to be playing a 4-3-3, by the way. This is just how it's set for now. We've got Hernandez, who is actually a very good choice. He's Chilean, and he does pretty well. Solid choice for a centre midfielder, but again, quite old, 30 years of age. And as you know, uh, you don't like your, your players getting over the age of 31, 32, because they start to decline. In terms of the other two guys, we've got Lobok Lobotka alongside him. Nearly butchered that. Four-star week for an only 22. Might be a good choice, and I bet his potential is not too bad either. But the only issue for me... He's five foot seven. I don't like having these types of players in my midfield, especially not playing central because that's where you need to win the headers. So maybe we'll have to look into that and potentially, you know, swap it around. By the way, sorry guys, didn't actually realise I had the menu sound effects on. But next one is Josebed, 
Hozebed? I have no idea. Regardless, 26, not a bad shout, but 77 rated. I think this is where we'll replace him with Vass or Wass. How do you actually say it? Because I don't want to go for an entire thing of me saying the name wrong. But he's a decent choice, this man. He can play a few positions and should be in the team for quite a long time. I'd say maybe if we brought in another centre midfielder there, our midfield is pretty set with those three. I don't think we need to do too much more in that front. The front three is where it really shines because we have Iago Aspas, who is going to be the star man. He's on the thumbnail. He's pretty much going to be the number one choice here as a forward for us. 29 years of age, so might have to leave the club soon, potentially. But of course, we want to keep him here as long as we possibly can. Alongside him, we have this man, Gomez, 20 years old, with a potential of, I'm hoping, somewhere in the mid-80s. But I could be wrong on that one. I just remember seeing his name pop up a few times. So again, a very good choice for a striker and can grow pretty nicely. Alongside that, Sisto, four-star, four-star, 22 years of age. I'm hoping again for around a mid-80s potential. If we train him up as well, he's going to be such a good man to have. We're on the bench, though, in terms of our kind of squad depth. This is where we might need to improve because we've got Emre Moore, who of course is here as well. If you know, I love me a bit of Emre Moore. Played in my Legion United career mode in FIFA 17. Needs a lot of work doing though. Got to train him up if we want him to be a star man. Four star skill moves, only the three star weak foot sadly. Potentially need a backup striker. We maybe need, you know, maybe another defender. And then outside of that, as you can see as we grow down, there is not too much better else down here. So yeah. Need a little bit of work doing. We knew that. We know that the budget is. And uh, right now, we'll go from checking out the squad to taking a look at the players I've shortlisted because some absolute huge names on there. I didn't take a massive look at players I wanted to sign. I just took a quick one. But let me show you it regardless because, as I said, there's some big players. So in terms of our shortlisted players, I had a look at this and I, I kind of just thought to myself, let me take a look in the free agents. I never look at this beforehand, but as you can see there... If we look at the free agents, we've got that man, which is a 19-year-old game-generated player. I'm just scouting him just to see, because I think maybe he might be a good shout. Renato Augusto, who is around about 79 rated, 80 rated at this point. Yannick Carrasco, the former Atletico Madrid man. We've got this man, Constantin Burescu. Oscar, Benjamin, Basogberg <laughs> as well. All these are free agents. The reason for that is of course the Chinese league doesn't exist in FIFA. If it existed, they would be at a team, we wouldn't be able to get them. So I think for the realism of the series and me not being able to just, you know, steamroll everybody, it doesn't make sense for me to go ahead and buy or try and sign Carrasco. It doesn't make sense for me to get Oscar. It doesn't make sense for me to get Berg because these guys are 80 rated and above. Renato Augusto I'm on the edge with. I don't actually know. I kind of want to wait for the squad report to come back before I decide what's going to happen regarding him. He's also playing in the Chinese league. However... This man, Benjamin, and this man, Christian, I'm just going to call them them. I'm just going to call them by the first name, makes it easier. I don't think these guys are playing Chinese League football, so I don't know why they are free agents. But I did have Benjamin in one of my previous career modes in FIFA 17 when we played at last Palmas. And he was decent, nothing special, but he was decent. And as well as that, we have Christian, who I've never had before. Both of these guys are pretty pacey. And for a backup striker, could do quite well for us. So I'm considering a move for these two on the free agent side of things. Of course, it'll only cost us a wage budget. Maybe we'll do that. I don't know right now. Let me know what your feelings on free agents are down in the comments. If you don't want me to sign any free agents, I mean, in terms of like right now who, you know, are already at Chinese clubs and stuff like that, then just hit me up with a comment. Because personally speaking, I think it will just be too easy if we do that. But I'm interested in signing this guy. Having said that, he's supposed to be 21. He certainly doesn't look 21. So let's have a look at approach to sign. If he's on and he wanted a stupid contract, I'm going to not do this, but let's find out anyways. So we're here to discuss. In terms of his squad role, he'd probably get rotation, I'd say, um, which he's happy with. Decent. That means I'm going to guess his overall is probably somewhere in the region of about 70 to maybe 73-ish because for him to accept rotation at a club like us... I think that's what his overall will be. Three-year contract, happy with that as well. Disregard the release clause, we're not interested in that. Now it's about talking money. So, for a backup striker, when we've got 55k in the wage, I should probably wait for his scout report to come back, but um, I, th I think 12k is a reason... No, in fact, nah. Let's go 15. 15k is a reasonable amount of money per week for a backup striker, I think. He wants 12,000, a signing bonus, and a 10 appearance bonus. Fair play. We'll take that. So, 
That's our backup striker sorted. I'm not sure what his overall will be, so let's check it right now. But in terms of that one, not too bad. If he's the same as Boy, he is exactly the same. Is there any difference between the two of them? So, I mean, Christian's faster. He's better finishing. And he's exactly the same to weak foot and skill moves. A little bit shorter, the same age, high low, which I like better. But then again, yeah, this that's strange actually. It seems like we've got exactly the same, barring the fact that of course he's he's quicker than boy. If he'd have been Spanish, I'd have kept boy, but he's Argentinian, so yeah. Well we'll have we'll have Christian as our backup, and that's that. So I may have made a boo-boo. <laughs> I didn't realise we had a couple of players out on loan. One of them being John Gadetti. He's on loan at Deputa Alvarez. Oh, I've probably butchered that. But if we recall him from the loan, we can get him back for 294,000. He could basically be our backup striker or we could sell him. So I'm going to recall him. How much is he worth? Let's have a look. So, you see, he's worth 11 million and he's on 25k a week. So if we add him to the transfer list, we might be able to shift him on and get some money back for him. Another player in a similar situation, Claudia Booth. Again, not really sure. We can recall him from his loan, 270k. We could recall all these guys as well and probably let them... Yeah, you know what? Let's just do it. Let's recall him. We're going to recall all the guys on loan and then transfer list them because I don't really see the point in having them out on loan when we could get a couple of million pounds for each for them if we let them go and, and actually sell them, you know? So that's probably what we're going to do. So let's transfer list the players I've just brought back off on loan. I'm probably going to do this for all of them, to be honest. Let me see if there's anybody else. See what I mean? Theo Bongonda. Why is he out on loan? He could be perfect in the backup for us. I don't need to bring in another player. Let's bring him back from his loan. Let's get him back, get him in the side and use him. I'm not going to sell him because I like Bongonda. But I have no idea why they've got players like this out on loan when they could be used in the side. It really doesn't make any sense whatsoever. That guy I'm not too bothered about. Lemos, not too bothered about either. But yeah, strange one that one to be honest. Nevertheless, brought a couple of players back on loan, transfer listed them. We've got Bong on the back who can play at that left mid spot as well. So right now we're looking pretty good. Emery Moore can fit in at right, uh, right wing. Aspas can go up front. Gomez up front. Sisto. It's decent. We're looking pretty good. I didn't actually show you either what the board wanted us to do. Well, this is it. Covered Espanya reached the round of 32 stage. Should be quite easy to do. Within two seasons in a Liga, finishing a Europa League spot. That one might be a little bit tough. We'll see. They want us to finish in the mid-table of La Liga for the first season as well. The youth development program is pretty easy. Sign at least two players younger than 20 years, all with potential greater than the average overall rating of players currently in the same position. So, of course, we just don't have to sign really good players for that to work. Grow one youth academy player by at least five overall points. And as soon as they have grown, play them in five matches. Not too hard. Brand exposure, one crucial first-team player to a forward position. I don't think we'll get that done because I'm not planning on bringing in another striker. So... Doesn't make sense to do that. Financial-wise, they want us to increase the club's worth. Domestic success. Yeah, we saw that. And there isn't a continental one because, of course, I don't think we're in a Europa competition. So, not too bad. Nevertheless, guys, this first episode is going to be me just talking a whole bunch. So I apologize for that in advance. But as you know, this is what happens when you start a new series. You kind of seeing what you want to do with your squads and seeing what's going on and then making your decisions based on that. But... Going to throw in some players to try and get their overalls up a little bit into the training system thing. So I think we're going to have Maximiliano Gomez. What a name that is. Six foot one striker. I think I'm going to throw in Ruben Blanco as well as our goalkeeper. Because I want him growing nicely to around about an 84 rated stage. And then I'll throw him back out again. So let's put him on both of those. Who do I want in the other ones though? That's the question. Could throw in Lobotka. Could throw in this man. Six one. What's his... Uh, okay. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. So let's throw him in. We'll do him on dribble possession. And I don't know what to do for the other one. Defending maybe. Passing probably is the best shout. Let's go passing. But yeah, let's let's just train these guys up. Get some overalls in the team. Have a really good squad. And then boss it in this first season. And take the league away from Real, Atletico, Barca. These types of teams that you used to see in being at the top of the world in Spain. No more. It's the era of Celta Vigo that begins today. So we've got some European International Cup thing. That's obviously the preseason tour. As you know, I don't really play these. So I'm going to go ahead and sim the first game. Might play a couple of them later on just to get used to the side and stuff. But we're taking on Leicester for the first one. We'll see how this one's going to pan out. Uh, I've named quite a strong team for it, actually, just to see what's going to happen. But they've actually taken the lead. So 
Yeah, that's not very good. I don't even know who that is who scored that opening goal. I see Jamie Vardy on the bench, Mara's on the bench. So they've not got, you know, their starting 11 out. We've got our starting 11 out, and yet we're losing by a goal to nil. Not ideal. Johnny picks up a red card as well. What are you doing, Johnny? We do get a goal back. Iago Aspas with that one. Of course, it's going to be him. But yeah, that's that's not a good start. To get a 1-1 draw in a game where Leicester didn't name their starting 11 and wasn't really a strong squad, that's a bit disappointing. But I suppose that's the way it goes. So everybody drew their first game. We're going to the second one. Might have to play the final one before we go. Perfect. Transfer offer for John Godetti. Just as I was saying a minute ago, Liverpool won him for 10.5 million. Now... His market value should be between 12.6 to 18.5. I don't want to negotiate them out of a move, but I do want more than that 10.5 million pounds. Strange to say that Liverpool want him. Um, am I seeing something... Oh, are they seeing something that I'm not? I don't, I don't want to upset them, so I'm only going to ask for... What do I ask for, 14? No, that's 3. Point, no, 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 let's go 13.5. So 3 million pounds more than they offered. Match it. There we go. So we got three million pounds more than what they initially offered. And we're getting rid of a player that wasn't even, you know, in my plans because I didn't even know we had him previously. So extra 13 million quid to the kitty. Benjamin 77 rated. What? I wasn't expecting that. Maybe. Okay, Renato Augusta's 80 rated as well. See, that's the problem. I don't want to bring in Renato Augusta and just have a really good player straight up. Constantine is 76 overall. I don't think we'll be getting him because we've already got players who can play that kind of position better. Do we get this guy 59 rated left back? Probably not. Do let me know what you think in regards to those free agents though. Do you think it'd be unfair for us to sign Renato Augusto? Do you think we should do it? Do you think we shouldn't do it? Let me know with a comment down below. I'm going to sign a couple of youth scouts here though as we head into this one just to get some youth players coming into the squad. So I'm going to pay a little bit of money for these two guys. I don't think we need any more than two for right now. I want to keep some of the budget so we'll be able to actually spend it on some other stuff. So we'll send one to Spain because of course we are a Spanish club and then we'll send one. Where do I feel like sending the other one? Let's go to... Let's go to... I think we should go to somewhere crazy. Like, I don't tend to go there often. I kind of go Europe normally, but I'm feeling like... Let's go Canada. Why not? Let's see what Canada have to offer in the way of footballers. Maybe a Canadian attacker, possibly. Yeah, I can see it. Let's go Canada. Let's go attacker. Let's go for nine months on that one. See what he brings back. This one's quite tough. Gustavo Cabral, or Cabral was one of those players I was speaking about moments ago, potentially replacing in the future because he is 31. He's our highest rated centre-back at the club, though. So I don't feel like a £9.5 million pound offer from Arsenal is a very good deal. So I'm inclined to maybe ask for £13 million pounds here. If we can get £13 million for him, I think we could replace him quite easily with another... Okay, 11.1. It's better than the 19.5 they offered. The question remains, though, can I replace him with a defender that's around a similar rating for a similar amount of money who's going to be better long term? Maybe a few years younger. That's going to be the question mark. I don't want to make too many changes to this side because I want to keep it as, as close as I can to the Celta Vigo team. But at the same time, I want to start a new era at the club. So, you know what? I'm going to accept it. We're going to accept that. He's 31. He's going to decline. He might not agree terms with Arsenal. There's always that as well. If he does, though, that's an extra £11 million in the kitty. We could try and replace him with even better players. We do as well get an offer for Pablo Hernandez, but there's no chance I'm letting the Chilean go. I want him here at the club. Sisto as well. Botafogo interested in a loan deal for him. No chance either we're letting him go. Probably going to play this game against CSK Moskva just to see what our side's like. And then I'll probably ask you guys what you want me to do in regards to signings because this is where you guys come in clutch in helping me make some decisions. I think we do need to bring in a, probably a backup right back and a backup left back. Maybe players of around 70 rated possibly because Manzan or Mazan's just come in but he's not the greatest left back in the world. Nevertheless, we're going to go into this game. I'm going to change around the side slightly so let's bring in Roger. Let's call him Roger. I don't even know how to say his name but I think I'm just going to go with that team. That's probably what we're going to go with. Let's see... How we get on in our first game as the manager of Celta Vigo that I'm actually going to play. That's going to be the funnest bit about it. Trying to get used to this team, the way they're playing stuff. 
Game against CSK Moscow. I don't like playing these types of things in the preseason tour, but it should be quite fun as well at the same time. So that's the squad. Let's see what happens when we're in game. We're playing at Anfield today of all places, and I picked a weird kit setup here, actually. I picked the black kit when they are, you know, kind of a dark... What is that, purplish? I don't actually know. If you don't know, I'm, I'm colorblind with dark colors, or kind of, I think it's dark green and black. I get mixed up with a lot. So yeah, it's quite difficult to see, but we'll try our best here. We've obviously, this has no pressure on me. I can play whatever I want to do because we are just trying to get used to the team. Gomez is set through our Gaspas. How has he saved that? Aspas on the return. It's over the top. Are you kidding me? How have we not scored? Aspas has got to finish that off. He's our star man. He's the thumbnail man. What a save it was actually from the keeper. I have to give credit there. And then the rebound, somehow he didn't put it in. Came out of absolutely nowhere. The pass through from Gomez actually. Was, uh, was really nice. I don't know how on earth we actually got in that easily. Poor defending. We should have scored, though. Vas out wide. And now we fire Diago Aspas in towards the penalty area. Aspas somehow keeps hold of it. Aspas scores the first goal that we get in this series that you're actually going to see. He, of course, scored the equaliser in the last game as well. This one, though, is inch perfect. Luckily, the ball came back to him. That's all I'm going to say. Tried the ball on in the box. The defender gets a toe to it, but doesn't get enough on it. And Aspas ends up getting it in and scoring the opener for us as well. There is the opener. Keeper maybe could have done better. I'm not sure. But regardless, we take the lead here in this one. And I have to say, their defending so far from Moscow has been very, very weak, the Russian side. They certainly need to improve on that one because otherwise this is going to get worse for them. That's a poor first touch as well. It's weird to say that when they're on a 20, you know, thingy first touch control thing. But 1-0 up, doing pretty well. Here goes Fernandez for Moscow now on this right-hand side. He cuts it back as well. Nice cut back. There's the shot. And Ruben Blanco is called into action. 21 minutes on the clock. Good save from our goalkeeper. Corner ball to deal with, though, now from us. We need to defend. This is the first time we're asked to defend. And overall, we didn't do it that well because they had a, did go a go-bound. But luckily, it was off target. Yeah, good save from Blanco, though, showing that we can rely on him if we need to. Oh, that's lovely. Here goes Vass now. He can hit them. We know he can. And there is the shot. Oh, my goodness me. What a strike from this man. I hope I'm saying his name right. If I'm not, I'm sure you will tell me in the comments. I've seen him play before. I've used him in Ultimate Team before. And I say this now. He can hit them from distance. What a strike from him. We take a second goal. That is inch perfect. In off the crossbar. No goalkeeper is going to save that one. What a strike from him. And we lead by two. I wonder where Akinfeyev is actually. Does he play for these guys? I could be getting that completely wrong. But nevertheless, that goalkeeper was beaten for the second time in a game. Wonderful strike. And we are looking like we're going to head to a victory in our first game. I feel pretty confident in the side. and playing some good stuff as well. Bit more defending to do again, though. Not really doing it very well, but there is that man. And Blanco again is forced into another save. And it was actually the defender who could be well joining Arsenal shortly. But he made the tackle. Didn't get it clear, though. That's the issue. Blanco again is there to punch it out. He could be quite important for us this season if he uh, has a good season. That's a good ball through. And Blanco's beaten. Just as I was saying that, it is 2-1. They get one back. And again, it's me not clearing our lines. We're not defending well. We don't clear our lines. Ah, it's going to be a little bit of a worry. I think we definitely need to improve our defending. This is what preseason tours can be good for, though. Trying to, like, work out what you need to improve on. And right now, all I'm seeing is our defense. That seems to be the issue we've got. Good strike, but could Blanco have done better? He's pulled off a few decent saves, but that one has let us down. So, Wern Bloom pulls one back for the Russians. And as it looks, I felt confident, and I felt like we were going to go on to win this and potentially get the clean sheet. Well, that's not the case anymore. And at half time, the score remains 2 1. I'm going to make a change here. We are going to bring on Emre Moore and replace Sisto on this left hand side, see what Emre can do for us. I don't think I'm going to make any more changes to the side just yet. I don't want to upset the balance too much. So, one change is all we're making. As the second half begins, we'll just see what's going to happen. I, I definitely feel after this game, though, we need to look at potentially some defenders. Hernandez. Here is Emre Moore. Lovely play. He cuts inside. Still going Emre Moore. And still Emre Moore. And still, and still. Tries to find a cut back. And Andes. It's 3-1 to Celta Vigo. We restore that two-goal lead. And it's Pablo Hernandez with it. Not the one from Leeds that I'm so used to seeing. Emre Moore gets the assist on it as well. 
It did take a mega deflection. The defender gets a leg into it, and that's what takes it into the path of Hernandez. Good run from Emre Moore, though, to get in that position. There is the deflection, of course. But then Hernandez's header is quickly reacted to, and the keeper can't make the save. Celta Vigo 3, CSK Moscow 1. Hernandez out to Emre Moore, who cuts inside his man. And he has space to run into here, Emre Moore. He's got a run from Iago Aspas to use as well. There he is. Can he get a good enough cutback? Yes, he can. And Gomez makes it four. Well worked, that one there. Aspas is assist. Gomez with a finish. But credit to Emre Moore for the actual setup as well. Cutting inside, managing to find that pass back. And this is good stuff, man. Seriously, going forward, I'm, I'm very, very, very happy with this team. They look good on the ball. And we will be able to create chances this season. I think the only thing we need is defenders. And uh, I tell you what, we are definitely going to be able to give some teams a run for their money. I'm saying this. It's been a good performance here, but this might just be a one-off. You never know. But going off the basis of this game, we're not going to struggle, I don't think, to find potentially a top four spot this season. Gomez. Vass. He's in a bit of space here. He's got Gomez making a run as well. Can he use him? Not quite. Should have gone to Emery more. Unfortunate, but that should be the end of the game. Referee, you want to blow your whistle anytime now? Never mind. We've got the ball still. Here goes Gomez again. Trying to turn. He's in. Gomez. Gomez. Trying to dink the keeper. He's not going to work. And that's the end of the game, though. 4-1 win for Celta Vigo in our first... Well, I'm not going to call it our first game in charge because it's only the preseason tour. Wow. Honestly, this team going forward feel really, really, really strong. And looking at the team, actually... Raj got man of the match. That's what I'm going to call him from now on, by the way. So Raj getting man of the match. We got Aspas on 9.5. Everybody played their part. Even Blanco with an 8.6. My goodness, what a performance it was from the boys. In terms of the, uh, the other side, they didn't really have anybody who stood out. But what a performance. The only thing that's frustrating me is the fact we didn't keep a clean sheet. But that for a first game in charge, in terms of what we actually did there, was very good. So pretty happy. So we've got John Gadetti has left the club. He has joined Liverpool for 13.5 million. 10.5 of which has gone back into our transfer budget. AS Monaco want Theo Bongonda as well. He's only worth 9.5, but I'm going to counter this because I wasn't really interested in letting him go. But if the offer's right from Monaco, then we may as well potentially look to sell him. And I just remembered, I just realised I rhymed there. So what am I looking for? Maybe, let's say, 14 million pounds. If we get that for him, then that's just ridiculous. 11.6. You know what? I, there's no point because uh, it, it might come in useful and 11.6 is really isn't that much money. This is the final game in the uh, preseason tour group stage. So if we win this, we'll be through to the semis where we can play for even more money. What for the opponents? Uh, I think a draw here is enough to take us into that semi-final anyway. Akaka scores for them, but Pablo Hernandez has equalized on our side. So we do have a 1-1 one, one game on our hands currently. Uh, who's the other game? Leicester and Moscow. That one goes Leicester's way. We're through as well. So 3-1 up anyways. We don't need to worry about that game because we're 3-1 up. Very, very happy with that. Decent result. That puts us through to the semis and we'll focus on that probably next episode. Maybe play those two games. Get some more money into the club and use that. I'm just waiting to see if we do lose our centre-back, Cabral. There you go. I did have a feeling... The transfer talks would maybe break down, which is the reason I didn't look at that one potentially more. But still, I, I think our priority now has to be another defender coming into the team. So if you've got any suggestions, this is what I'm going to go on to right now, as we're going to try and counter this one for Bongonda again here. Hanover are the team, I think, that want him. Um, one of the sides that we potentially... Okay, so the only one to give is 11.9. What about 12.5? It's not actually that much more. I don't know why I'm doing this, because he could come in useful. 12.1. You know what? May as well. Why not? 12.1. Sell him. Let him go. See you later. Yeah, Hanover. One of the sides we potentially may have joined. Looks like they want to take Bongonda off our hands. So, in terms of that, guys, that is where I'm going to end the episode off today. If you do have any suggestions at all for any players that you want to see join us here at Celta Vigo... Let me know with a comment in the comment section. I apologize for the fact that I've spoken so much in today's video. That's what happens when you get a new squad and you're trying to work around it. So, as I said, any suggestions, mainly defenders, because that's what I'm going to be looking at the most for this upcoming next episode, where we'll have just a whole heap of transfers potentially coming in. 
if the deal for Bongonda goes through and we sell him, we might have around about 25 million quid to spend. So, of course, if you want to give me that, then just hit me up with that one. Just realized I should have changed it to euros. Why did I keep it as million? Oh, man. Oh, I'm an idiot. I should have changed that. We should have put it as euros. I apologize. The way I can change it? Not now. Forget it. Doesn't matter. Is what it is. There you go. So, um, that is how we're ending the episode today then, guys. If you did enjoy the first episode of this new series, hit that like button. As always, thank you for your continued support. I really appreciate it. You guys are incredible. And uh, if you're not already subscribed and you like what you see, hit that subscribe button. Who knows? Maybe you're tuning into the channel for the first time after this new Celta Vigo career mode. Maybe you're seeing this as my first video as well, potentially. Who knows? If as well, you don't want to miss any videos upcoming in the future, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any. And I will catch you all with the second episode of this series where we'll act upon your suggestions for signings very, very soon. Catch you all then. Adios.